The emergence of mechanical and chemical engines has been on a steady rise for decades now. And there is no denying that these inventions have more than helped make initially undoable tests easy. But not all engines have lived to see their glory days. Some have since ceased running for various reasons, ranging from technical hitches to posing risks to users and the environment. In this video, we'll show you some of the engines that are banned everywhere. Keep watching, and in the comment section below, let us know if you feel the decision was right. But before we begin, kindly subscribe to our channel for more of our amazing content. Please give us a like, share the video, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our new uploads. Let's get it on! Number 1. The M-Drive this Roger Sawyer invention has always left scientists scratching their heads as purported to generate thrust by reflecting microwaves internally in the device, thus violating the law of conservation of momentum and several other physics-related legalities. The electromagnetic propulsion, which operates on the principle of the reaction mass, was specifically meant to be a spacecraft thruster. Rocket engines operate by expelling propellant which acts as a reaction mass and produces thrust per Newton's third law of motion. The M-Drive, however, does not expel any propellant for it to produce a reaction force. Thus, it provides thrust as a closed system with no external interaction, which scientists argue shouldn't be the case. Some finer analysis relates to a situation where you're in the back of an 18-wheeler truck and you take away the engine. There remains a box on wheels. That's exactly what happens with the M-Drive. Therefore, it's still on hold and NASA hasn't cleared it for legal operations because of its complexity and the fact that it goes against the laws of gravity. It has never been proven whether it can operate spacecraft or not. It will be one of the best inventions amongst its peers once proven because it doesn't require any chemical fuel, meaning it is clean energy. Number 2. H2O Engines the development of car engines that can run on ordinary water has been going on for several decades. Troubles, however, constantly happen during certain stages. Scientifically, using water to power cars is, unfortunately, only a pipe dream. We all know water cannot burn like traditional fossil fuels, but any hope of extracting energy from it can only be achieved by chemical means. A water molecule contains three atoms, an oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms bound together like magnets. According to Wai Cheng, a professor of mechanical engineering and director of the Sloan Automotive Lab, where he researches engine performance and emissions, combustion science and energy conversion, breaking those bonds will always take more energy than you get back. Let's say you wanted to power a car. It would need equipment to split a water molecule apart and separate its oxygen and hydrogen and it would need to isolate each of them in separate tanks. And you'd need a combustion system that could mix and ignite them as a fuel cell that would recombine them to make electricity. The released energy would then drive a piston or run a motor and move the car. Here's the problem. A water molecule is very stable and stubborn at the same time. The energy needed to separate the atoms is greater than what you get back. This process actually eats up energy instead of giving it out. In 1988, Stan Mayer went against all odds and produced a car that could cover a distance of more than 4,500 kilometers on 80 liters of water. After his invention, Mayer was allegedly poisoned. Mayer died with his brains and water engine project died with him. Number 3. Underground Thorium Stations In the late 1990s, Lev Maxinov came up with a breakthrough project that could pull out Russia from the incoming crisis and ensure its position as a leading world power producer. He suggested that nuclear power plants that use conventional fuel be upgraded and replaced by underground thorium stations. The use of safe thorium inside of uranium was to eliminate the danger of radioactive contamination in case of an accident and, at the same time, solve global environmental problems related to the disposal of used nuclear energy. A thorium nuclear reactor with fundamentally new thermal elements can operate up to 50 years without recharging, while a uranium one pollutes the environment with nuclear waste every 18 to 24 months. The United States energy agencies offered millions of dollars to Maxinov as the patent holder for his participation in the American energy and industry development. 
According to Gurye Cherno Murden uranium deal, all reserves of the 500 tons of thorium uranium required to launch the reactor were to be transferred to the United States before 2013. The deal was estimated at $12 billion. In 1999, Lev was reported to have survived an assassination attempt, which was, in fact, the second one in a period of less than five years. Other members of its team were not very lucky as they all died in mysterious circumstances. The project has since been halted. Number 4. Hydrogen Engines The use of hydrogen in engineering is not a new technology. The real reason why hydrogen is not widely considered for engine has always been related to engines' thermodynamic efficiency versus fuel cells. One gallon of gasoline has about 130 megajoules energy content. One kilogram of hydrogen lies in the same range, 130 to 140 megajoules. At first sight, it would appear that they are pretty much equal, except that hydrogen costs several dollars per kilogram to produce. The use of hydrogen in engines also has a lot of risks. This element is very toxic, and its use may lead to poison-related accidents if it leaks. Secondly, a detonation of hydrogen is more powerful than gasoline, and if two vehicles containing hydrogen were to be involved in an explosion, the blast would be apocalyptic. For these reasons, hydrogen engines have been suspended in so many regions across the globe. Number 5. Wood Gas Engines If you have ever wondered what we will do after we run out of oil, then you'll have to take a look at North Korea. Ever since the shipments of crude oil from the USSR and China dried, they have to improvise. Wood-fired engines was one of the groundbreaking inventions whose birth news went round to almost all parts of the sphere. Nowadays in North Korea, if you see a truck, especially in a rural area, it's probably running on wood gas. That's carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas produced by burning coal or wood in a low oxygen environment. The resulting gas can be pumped into a diesel engine and, in that form, is a replacement for liquid fuels. Many people have been using them for a very long time. In fact, there exist even ready-made engines. The most devastating and most likely disappointing thing with this type of engine is that you have to wait for more than 20 minutes for it to pick up. These engines also release a lot of carbon dioxide into the environment. It is therefore not allowed for use in various areas across the world. Did you enjoy our video? Which of these engines do you feel should be approved for use? Well, if you enjoyed our video, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more of our fantastic content. Please give us a like, share the video, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our weekly content. We value your feedback. Feel free to share your thoughts with us in the comments section below.